Hello, hello, and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be talking about the three retirement savings mistakes that you probably don't even know that you're making. A lot of people have really no plan when it comes to retirement. They have a couple of things that they're doing. They've got their fingers crossed that they are going to be ready for that next step in life. And, uh, and they just kind of go on their way. Well, these are three things that could really make or break retirement for you. And we're going to take a look at them and see, are you just avoiding looking at this stuff? Or did you not actually know that this is something you should be taking a look at? Now, stick around if you want to see if you're doing those blenders. But I want to take a second and talk about the word retirement. Um, I feel I feel like I've talked about this before, but maybe I haven't. Um, so retirement is a really triggering word for people. Um, I know that might be surprising for some of you, but for the older generation, like the baby boomers, it's not so triggering. It's kind of a happy word. They're like, oh, retirement, I want to get to retirement. But for the Gen X and millennials and Gen Z, who I am starting to work with a little bit, um, they are triggered by that word mainly because the idea of putting off life, just, you know, working and saving and working and saving and not enjoying life until you hit 65 is just not reality for them anymore. They feel like they want to enjoy life now. And, you know, retirement is retirement. A lot of them feel like they want to enjoy the work that they're doing. It's that instant satis you know, satisfaction that we see basically because of social media, we have kind of gotten to that world of wanting to be able to balance life more than just kind of be a good little boy or girl and wait until you hit 65 and then you get to go crazy and go all over the place. People want to go travel to Europe now. They want to enjoy their life now. They don't want to just be waiting for retirement. And so when you hear me say the word retirement, in this video or really any videos, it's really not about retirement. It's about financial freedom. It's about that time that you can basically say, I can do what I want, when I want, with who I want, and money is no, no uh, uh, border or <laughs> what's the word I'm trying to say, is, is not an issue for me basically, is not, a, is not a hurdle. That's what I'm trying to think of. I can picture it, but I couldn't say it. So it's not a hurdle for me anymore because I am financially free. I have financial independence. I can do what I want when I want and money's no object at this point. And you know, that number is different for everybody. Some people, they want money to be no object and they want to be cruising around the world and they want to take private jets and they want to do all that stuff. That's a lot different of a number then if you just want to be able to travel once or twice a year, enjoy time with family, you know, transfer to doing work that you love, maybe you're doing a job that you don't like so much, um, things like that, follow passions, that's the kind of thing that people are looking at. So I always have this, this um, talk with clients and I say, I want you to balance your life. I don't want you to not enjoy your life now. That is not the object. That is not what money is for. Money is supposed to provide joy and freedom for us. I can't have sushi if I can't have, if I don't have any money, right? That brings me joy. Um, but at the same time, you have to learn how to have that ability to control money so that you can continue to enjoy your life, that you're not enjoying and then stopping because you can't, you can't afford it anymore, then enjoying and then stopping and enjoying and stop. Like that's not fun, right? We want a smooth ride. We don't necessarily want a choppy ride. And so financial independence can mean a lot of things for a lot of different people. I think that there is a really good chance that you should figure out what that is to you before you really start diving into saving because it's kind of hard to know what are you saving for if you don't know what that means to you, right? So, um, but you know, I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but essentially I want you to think of when I say retirement mistakes or retirement blunders or any of that stuff, it's really about financial freedom, financial independence. And that can come at any point. It doesn't have to be 65, 67, that kind of thing. It could just never happen if you want it to be that way. Um, but most people want that point that they hit a security point that they feel secure in being able to do what they want. 
uh, when they want. So, all right, now that I've gone off on that tangent for a little bit, hopefully that makes it a little easier for you to watch the rest of the video and you hear the word retirement and it doesn't go, oh, I don't want retirement and turn it off, right? I don't want that. Um, I want you to stay to the end. It's very good information you're gonna hear. Okay, <laughs> so mistake number one that people are making is not considering taxes enough. We don't like taxes. You know, there's that whole saying, you know, two things are inevitable in life, death and taxes. My husband says that all the time. And he's right in many respects. We're gonna pay taxes and we're gonna die someday. And that's, that's kind of the two, two guarantees in life, right? But there are things that we don't consider when we're dealing with taxes. We don't consider the instant gratification of deferring tax now, which a lot of people just jump on it. They want that deferral, right? Especially business owners. You business owners are the worst at this. You just want to defer, defer, defer. I don't want to pay taxes. I don't want to pay taxes. And then we get to retirement and you want to retire at 55 and everything's in tax deferred accounts. And now we have an issue of where do we pull money when when you know you you're 55 because 59 and a half is when you lose those um those uh penalties on there so now you're having to pay 10 percent penalty to get to your money well and people say well i'll just pay i'll just you know sell my business but a lot of times you don't want to pay tax when you sell a business either and so now you're in other different types of accounts that have to be there for a bit to help avoid some of the taxes or help ease some of the taxes. It's just one of these things that you just don't get a, a sum of money that just comes to you and is tax free and you're all good, you know? So you've got to think about, and if you don't own a business, which many of us don't, I do, but many of us don't, um, you know, then you don't consider putting money, anything outside of your 401k. You know, you just kind of do the traditional 401k. You might max it out if you're doing, you know, if you are, are conscious of the saving and, and trying to save for the future and you just max out your 401k. Well, that's okay. I mean, it's okay to max out your 401k, but again, where are you getting money that isn't at such a high tax rate? Because the one thing that we don't seem to realize is that it feels like taxes are super high right now, but they're really not. Historically, they have been much higher in the past. Um, you know, during the war World Wars, they were a lot higher. And, and just in general, in history, they've been much higher than they are now. And that's one thing we can't control, right? We can't control where the taxes are gonna be in the future, but we know where they are now. So am I saying don't defer anything, put everything in after tax vehicles, no. But you should consider adding a Roth maybe, but that also has a 59 and a half rule, just as an FYI. Um, looking at different accounts, like just traditional brokerage accounts. Um, they're just open-ended accounts that you can put as much money as you want, and they're not labeled as a retirement account, so they don't have that 59 and a half rule in it. Um, same amounts of different investments you can put in there as a, you know, as a traditional IRA or, you know, traditional Roth. Um, but, you know, essentially it just has a different tax guideline on it, which is good because it makes it available for you if you need the money beforehand. Let's say you get this awesome opportunity to go on a cruise around the world for six months and your boss says, yeah, do it, do it. That's once in a lifetime. Nobody will get that price again. Do it, right? And all of your money is tied up and IRAs and 401ks and that kind of stuff, and you don't have the ability to get the money out, that would be a problem. That we don't want, that's not financial freedom, right? Now people are gonna say, well, you can take a loan from the 401k, well, yes, you could do that, et cetera. But, um, but I'm just trying to, I know that's an extreme example too, right? But you've got the best boss in the world if that happens. But I do think that people don't think about taxes enough and they think about just kind of putting it in tax deferred stuff now and we'll just deal with the taxes later. And that doesn't, that I have not seen that work out at all. I have plenty of clients that come to me later on in life. They've already made their decisions of where they're gonna put money. And then they're like, I, why am I having to pay so much in taxes? Because you put it all in tax deferred accounts and now you're having to take it out a lot out of tax deferred accounts that are all taxable at your income tax rate. And you know, it affects other things like Medicare, 
you get extra penalties, extra taxes attached to it if you take too much out as income. There's just lots of different things. So you just want to have a good handle on how taxes are going to be handled now and in the future and be comfortable with that. Have a balance. Everything's about a balance. You hear me talk about it's a balance. It's always a balance. That's, that's the whole idea. All right. Mistake number two is underestimating expenses. Um, I may have two parts for this. Underestimating expenses in particular is a big one because I have a lot of people come to me to do planning, you know, usually in their maybe mid fifties or so they're getting ready for that retirement time or, you know, being able to step back at work, kids are going to college, that kind of thing. And I say, how much do you need a month to be guys? And they say, I don't know, like six, six grand a month. And then when we actually start breaking it down, I'm like, how much is your mortgage? Well, it's 3,500. Oh, so you guys really only spend six grand a month? I mean, that's not very much on top of your mortgage. Oh, well, maybe it's more than that. Okay, so do you have to do a budget? No, you don't have to do a budget. I've done video after video talking about you don't have to do budgets, but you do need to know what your expenses are. And I would say everybody tends to say lower, right? They don't want to say $10,000 because they think I'm going to sit there and judge them and go $10,000 a month. Why are you spending your money? I, it's not my money. You can spend your money. If you have the money, you can spend it, right? But I think you should always, if you're not quite sure, don't go low, go high, right? Because I say this and everybody always laughs, but it's absolutely true. I have never had one person be mad at me because they save too much money in retirement. They can always find something to spend their money on. Okay. That's if you want to bounce that last check and not see, leave a cent to your kids, that is totally fine. You will find something to spend money on. You will. <laughs> There's plenty of stuff to spend money on. Um, and so essentially start by thinking higher. So if you're not quite sure and you're thinking, oh, it's maybe six to eight, go to eight or nine right? That's a good rule of thumb. Um, because honestly, people underestimate just by human nature. 54% of people underestimate monthly subscriptions by about $100 a month. 24% underestimate it by $200 a month or more. And that's from a survey by an article or by a company called Medium. And so, you know, if you are not sure, estimate high, don't estimate low. The other thing that people underestimate is healthcare costs. Healthcare costs, especially if you're thinking that you want to retire earlier than 65, you want to be, you know, done with work at 55 or so, healthcare can be expensive. And depending on, you know, outstanding health conditions and things like that, you really need to dig into that and see what healthcare could cost. The biggest problem that we have with planning with this is we can run numbers and stuff, but we will never know for sure until we get there, right? Because no health broker who's worth anything, let's put it that way, is going to run you quotes for two years out because they know that that's not a realistic number because it changes every year. You know, premiums go up, you know, sometimes they go up 5%, sometimes they go up 19%. They're not going to do that because they're putting their neck on the line. And honestly, it's not a good representation for them, right? So they, they know that and they're not going to do it. Um, so again, really think healthcare is probably going to be a big part of your budget and, um, and just can kind of add that in there and consider that. Another, uh, the third mistake that people are making is not diversifying enough. You hear me talk about this all the time. You've probably heard it from your advisor or from other people on YouTube talking about this. We're putting all of our eggs in one basket. Everything is in, you know, my 401k. Everything is in, you know, this annuity I bought. Everything I bought, you know, everything is supposed to go in one thing and it's the miracle product that's going to change everything for you. That's not realistic, right? That is not, think of it as like a meal, right? If you had a meal, there's always, I always talk about diets and stuff because I hear a lot about them. And there's this thing called the carnivore diet, right? Where people are eating like steak. That's all they're eating is steak. Every single day, steak, right? And that's okay. That works for some people. But I would say that from what I've been reading about your gut and your microbiome, 
it doesn't really necessarily like just steak all the time because it wants a little bit of variety. For a healthy gut, a healthy microbiome, you are supposed to have a variety of different foods, right? And I could go into fermented foods and all this. I've looked at the gut way too much. I know too, too much about what to eat for your gut health. Um, but that variety, that spice of life is supposed to be in your planning too. So you should have multiple different accounts doing multiple different things. You should have some investments, some fixed income, some savings, some uh, maybe some outside investments. Maybe you're invested in a business. Maybe you're invested in real estate. Maybe your home is your investment in real estate. That is fine. You don't want everything in one bucket though because having different streams of income provide choices. I always say to people who say, well, I don't know if I want to buy a home, especially now because it's so expensive to buy a home nowadays. I know it's just crazy. Essentially people say, well, I don't know if I want to buy a home. And I always tell them, you don't have to buy a home, but I will tell you if you are able to make it so that you can buy a home, it does afford you choices down the line. If something happens, you can always sell your home. You always have equity in your home. Well, you don't always, but there's most of the time people have equity in their homes that they could borrow. They could do different things in retirement with their home equity. It's, it's just provides more, more opportunity, more choices. If for some reason things don't work out as you want. And I tell you the biggest question I get asked, the biggest concern people have is, you know, am I going to run out of money in retirement? That is the number one thing people ask me about. And the home helps, right? Because usually when we're doing a retirement plan, we're not calculating in the equity in your home. So to insure, well not insure, you can't insure anything, but to give that safety net of, of not running out of money, having a home does help a lot. Um, so just think about diversification. How do you diversify where your money is and what it's doing? Not all of your investment accounts should necessarily be doing the exact same thing. Maybe they should be doing different things because maybe they have different timelines too. So diversification can go way across the board. So that is a big one that people don't think about enough. Spread it out, spread it out folks. All right, so remember that these are three of the co most common mistakes I see happen, um, but there are many more out there. But this is a good place to start. And if you feel like you've made some of these mistakes, do not worry, just, it's the right time to fix it now, right? And if you don't know who to talk to, feel free to come to us. We're absolutely happy to take a look, help you, just kind of give you some advice on a personalized basis. Obviously, these are very generic videos for a reason because I don't know what's going on in your life, right? All right, so thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found this helpful in staying to the end because I think it's always, uh, always good to learn something every day, right? So for the next video, it is financial foreplay, how to spice up your relationship with money. A lot of people have bad relationships with money and we are gonna talk about that in the next video. So I hope you're excited about that. I am, I think that'll be a fun one. So again, thank you so much for watching, hopping on, hope this helped. And until next time, be money positive and keep working towards your goals. Bye-bye.